Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Home Automation with the Arduino and the Amazon Echo, and this is part two. So if you haven't watched part one yet, please do that before you get into part, part two. That's what I recommend. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm getting close to 10,000 and really pushing for that 10,000 mark. All right, let's get started. Okay, this is probably gonna be a four part series. In part one and two, we talk about using the Echo to control a device in your home and we're using a light as an example. And in parts three and four, we're using it to monitor a device in your home and we're gonna use a washer as an example. But in part two, well, first let me say, in part one, what did we do? We looked at how to set up an Alexa skill. We looked how to set up a Lambda function with JavaScript and we used that to communicate a or to change a variable on the font cloud and then our Arduino is going to read that variable and use it to control the light and so in this in part two we're going to talk about the code for the Arduino or the node MCU as well as the hardware for the Wi-Fi AC switch this is just a reminder of our setup in part one you know we're we are here at the Amazon cloud and also the spark fun font cloud in this one, we're going to be talking about the Node MCU code as well as the Wi Fi AC switch. You know, going into this, I'm going to assume that you have some experience with the ESP8266 system on a chip and how it works. So I'm just going to assume that if you haven't, if you don't know what that is, you know, do a Google search, you'll, you'll get information on it. I also want to mention that the Wi Fi AC switch is available at forstronics.com for sale if you want to purchase it. Of course, though, like all my projects, this is open source, so if you want to build it yourself, I'll provide the ego files on GitHub. Okay, let's take a look at the Wi-Fi AC switch, then we'll look at the code for the Node MCU. Okay, what we're looking at is a schematic in the CAD PCB layout software package Eagle. If you're not familiar with Eagle and you want to get into it, I, it's very easy to get started with and there's a lot of tutorials out there. I'm just going to go over the schematic in this video. If you're not familiar with Eagle and you don't plan to build the board, it's all right because I'm, I'm just going to go over the schematic and how things work. So what you're looking at here is a schematic diagram of the Node MCU. So all the different pins on the Node MCU and these pins out here are basically pins that I'm not using to control the light. So I created a pinhole in the PCB board so you can access those pins if you want. And for instance, these are the spy pins. These are just sort of a mix of the general pins and same thing over here. The main pin that's used to control is D2 or GPIO pin four, and that's going to a N-channel MOSFET. So what happens is when D2 goes high, it turns this MOSFET on and creates a path from this chip, which I'll talk about in a second, to ground. All right, and this 300 ohm resistor basically serves as a current limiting resistor. This 10K resistor basically serves as a pull down. So, you know, if D2 is at an unknown state, it'll pull the gate of this MOSFET to low so the MOSFET stays off. So we don't get the sort of intermittent behavior when, when the chip is in an unknown state. And by the way, you'll see the actual board too in my video and I'll, I'll point out some of these features on, on the board itself. Now what you're looking at here is actually an opto isolator and a triac. And the idea here is I actually have a video, uh, I believe it's a like something like switching on an AC light using a triac or a thyristor. So I go into great detail about how this works in that video and I'll put the name of that video here on the screen. But basically this is an opto isolator. So this basically makes sure we don't get our DC voltages mixed up with our AC voltages because that's typically not good. So how it works is if we have about five milliamps flow through pin one to pin two, this turns on a an opto device or basically a light emitting LED that then forward biases another uh, diode device and basically allows this triac to turn on. And think of this triac, it's a lot like this MOSFET, it's a switch, 
but it's a switch for AC. It can handle the positive and negative voltage swings of AC. So what happens is we have 3.3 volts here. That's what VCC is. If this end channel MOSFET turns on, we get a flow through here, which is going to turn on the, the triac. So close the triac and then we get the light to turn on because AC voltage can flow. When this is off, low, basically no current is flowing through here, the triac is going to be off and the light will turn off. Now let me scoot over a little bit now that we covered that. So here you're looking at our two connectors, AC in and AC out. So these are screw terminals. So we're gonna, you're gonna see in the video that I cut my cord and I strip off the ends and I put it in this terminal connector. And then I take the other end of the cord that goes to the light. This is the end of the cord that plugs into the wall. This is the end of the cord that goes to the light. And I do the same thing. As I mentioned, this is the triac. This is just some uh, conditioning reg resistors that, that, that need to be here. And once again, I cover that in my, my video. Here's a fuse. So I have a fuse in the circuit for protection. It's a fast blow fuse. It can handle a peak voltage of 250 volts and it can handle two amps. So two amps for AC is a lot because if we're working with 120 volts AC, two amps, that's, that's like 400, excuse me, that's like 240 watts. It's a pretty good uh, cushion for, for an AC device. I do need to mention that this is configured to handle up to about 150 volts AC RMS. So this is made to work in the US. I think Japan is uh, 100 volts. So it'll work in Japan, but it's not going to work like in Europe because I believe they're 220. You can get an opto isolator and the right configuration from the data sheet to handle 220. This is an MOC 3041. If you look up the data sheet, it does show a configuration for handling 220. This is made to handle less than 220 though, so sorry about that. Then if I move over, what we have here is a power supply too. So what's nice about this setup is we don't have to plug in the light to it and then plug the light in the wall and then plug in another plug to power the circuit. We actually get the AC power from the, the input AC voltage and use it to power this power supply which takes the AC in and converts it to five volts, and here's the output. And on the output, I just have some bypass capacitors as well as a Zener diode just to make sure it doesn't, the voltage doesn't go too high. So what this, uh, this power supply does is it creates five volts. That five volts then goes to the node MCU input voltage, and the node MCU has a regulator on it and it turns it into 3.3 volts. So we do have five volts DC and 3.3 volts. And notice I, la I create pins so you can pick off that five volts. So it's nice because the board, if you want to add any other sensors or anything else to the board, it has a five volt output as well as a 3.3 volt output. Okay, that's enough about the board. That's just a quick view of the schematic. I'll have this on GitHub and I'll show you the picture of the board in action later in a video. But first, let's look at the code for the Node MCU. Okay, here we are with the code and I'm using the Node MCU, but this code should work on any, you know, ESP8266 board or at least most of them out there. And first thing I do is I call in my needed libraries. One of the libraries is the font library, which was created by SparkFun. And this is a library that really handles the, the strings or creates the strings to post data or to get data from the font cloud. So you don't have that library just search for it you'll be able to find it next thing I do is I create variables to hold all my network my Wi-Fi or router network name and password so you, you want to make sure you put your network name and password in there here's just some variables I create uh, one is for pin 4 or GPIO pin 4 on the node MCU that's the one that's going to control the light so I make a variable for it and then this char array, I'm basically holding a word in there and I'm doing that because I use that word to help me parse through the data that I get from the font cloud so I can get to the one or the zero that tells me if I need to turn the light on or off. 
And then here is my keys for my font cloud or data stream that I created. So you're gonna to wanna to put your public key in here and you're gonna to wanna to put your private key here. This variable is for my post rate. So I basically, and maybe I shouldn't call it post rate, I should call it get rate, but basically it's in milliseconds. So every second this sketch checks the font cloud and grabs the variable and, and checks the state and sees if it needs to change the light on or off. Okay, and this is just another timer variable. So in my setup, I initiate the hardware, which is basically just setting up the GPIO pin that's gonna control the light. I then call this function, which I'll show you, which is basically gonna to connect to my Wi-Fi router, and if it fails, it'll just keep trying to connect. And then I'm using this just to signal that I connected my built-in LED. Here's my loop, and all that's happening in the loop is we're just looping until it's time to get data from the font cloud. And basically, this is the call, this is the function call I use to get data from the font cloud. And it basically then is updating these timer variables so it knows when a second's done and to check again. So here's the function that's used to connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna go through this in detail. You know, there's comments on it. Here's the initiate hardware function, pretty simple, just setting up the pin. And notice that when it first turns on it, it has the light off. And then get from font. This is one of the more important functions. And you know, this is going to have a lot of the, the font library calls. So basically, right here for this font library call, you're basically creating an object to the font library and feeding in your the host as well as the public and private key. We then create a Wi-Fi client. We then try to connect to the font cloud using that client. If we don't succeed, we just get out of here. Then once we connect to it, we send this get command. So remember, the client is the one com communicating with the cloud. This font library is the one really just building your strings, your HTTPS strings to post or get data from the cloud. Then this whole while loop right here is basically me parsing through the data. So when you get data from the cloud, you don't just get the variable, you get timestamps, you get headers and things like that. And what I'm doing here is parsing through it to look for the variable that I'm interested in. And if you're ever interested in what do these strings look like, you can basically see some of them if you use your web browser, but you could also use the serial monitor and print out these interactions to kind of see what it looks like if you're interested. And then I, you always want to make sure you stop the client because if you create too many clients and you don't end them, you won't be able to connect anymore. All right, so that's the, the code for the Node MCU, and I'm going to post this on GitHub as well. Let's take a last look at the board, the actual finished Wi-Fi AC switchboard, and see Alexa in action controlling the light. Okay, here we are on the close-up of the board. And here you can basically see the inputs, the screw terminals. So this is the AC coming in. This is it going out to the light. With AC, it really doesn't matter the order that you're connecting the wires, just so you know that. Just be sure that if you have braided wires like these, make sure none of the, the wires slipped out of the braid and are creating a short. So be careful of that. You may notice that these, this terminal is a little crooked. That's just because these terminals actually can rotate a little bit to reduce strain. Here next to the terminals, you're seeing the, the fuse to protect it. This white thing is the opto isolator chip. And this is actually the triac right here. Then what you're looking at is a power supply. I bought this off the shelf and I basically have a footprint for it on the board and I put it back onto the board. And then of course, here's the node MCU. And you can think of this almost as like a shield. The Node MCU plugs into these headers, but you can take it out if you want to use it for something else. And then you can also see some of the pinholes I have in there so you can access the different pins on the Node MCU. You can also access 5 volts or 3.3 volts. And like I mentioned before, I'll have this on sale at forcetronics.com. And I'll also have the option to purchase some Node MCUs if you want that as well. One thing I do want to mention though for this project is, you know, I, I chose to switch AC power on or off. But keep in mind, 
you don't have to do this in this project. You could, you know, the main thing about what I want to show in this project is how to send data to the cloud and how to read it off with the Node MCU. What you actually control is up to you, but, you know, if you want to control AC, this is a great way to do it. And since I'm using a triac versus a relay, you don't get that clicking sound. It's a nice silent turn on and turn off. Okay, anyway, let me, uh, let me show this in action now that we know all the parts for parts one and two. So I'm going to pan out and you're going to see my, uh, my light. It's currently off. There's the Alexa. Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation to turn light on. The light is turned on. And there we go. The light turned on. Alexa, ask Forstronics Home Automation to turn light off. The light is turned off. And there we go. Okay, that's it for part two. Home automation with the Arduino and the Amazon Echo. If you have any comments or any questions, please use the comment section below. I think for part one, I got some good comments on how other people sort of configured their Alexa. So keep those good comics coming or good comments coming. And in part three, we'll We'll basically look at a reverse flow of what, we, what we've been doing. We'll be posting data using the Arduino and we'll use the Echo to read that data to tell us a certain state of a device. An important thing to note though is this one's gonna be a little more complex for the Alexa because we're gonna to have to parse through data to get to the answer we, we wanna find. All right, thank you for watching.